All right, so here's some comments from some of the YouTube view viewers out there. Uh, you wasted three minutes of my life. Sorry. Uh, research your topic. Does that even really qualify as advice? And the favorite one as of late is just, this was a bad video. You're gonna get people who are gonna say some things that aren't gonna make you feel very well. This has happened to me ever since I started doing online business, even before I got onto YouTube. Now, when I got onto YouTube, I mean, the haters definitely stepped up their game there, but there's one person in particular that almost derailed me so much that I almost quit online business back in 2011. I'll tell you about him in just a second, but before that, some advice. Building an online business is something amazing, but by being online and doing the things that you should be doing to build exposure, to build an audience, you are allowing yourself to be vulnerable to people who have stuff going on in their life and they feel the need to put it out on you. And it's not your fault. I mean, maybe there are some cases where you do get some constructive criticism that may be using language that may be a little bit harsh, but I think it's important to, when you get feedback that doesn't really rub you the right way, to step back and go, okay, well, is this person actually telling the truth? And that's always step number one with me. Anytime I have somebody say something about my stuff and the work that I'm doing, I always pull back and go, okay, well, is that actually true? Now, in the case of the guy who said, you know, for example, does researching your topic even count? as a piece of advice, then I can very quickly and easily answer that. Because yes, obviously it is. If you're gonna write a book, you wanna make sure that you understand who your competitors are and the kinds of things that you need to be inserting into that book and, and those kinds of things. So this person just wasn't completely understanding what my purpose was of saying that and I was able to, through a reply, allow him to understand that. So that's easy. You can step back, it was about my work, so I can understand the truth about that. The hard thing is when somebody talks about you and you as a person and, and really gets in there and starts to, to like poke you with something and then move it around a little bit and just doesn't make you feel really good, right? Like nobody likes being poked. And sometimes that poking is so harsh that it feels like a machete being inserted into your body and it's just like the worst thing that could ever happen. And it's really funny because we have this really interesting math as entrepreneurs. One negative comment completely outweighs a hundred positive comments. You likely get thanked for what you do or you're gonna be thanked for what you're gonna do and people will love you and they're gonna be very thankful that you offer what you offer and the fact that you exist and are able to help them. Yet, there's going to be one person who's gonna say something negative about you in a way that just completely upsets you where all those positive comments don't even matter anymore. And that's hard because it happened to me in 2011 and I almost gave up. So let me take you back to 2011 and I'm gonna paraphrase a comment that was left in my blog. It was about 2,000 words, so I'm not gonna read this for you. I also don't wanna give credit to this person because they don't deserve any sort of attention at all, but this situation deserves attention. So this comment called me out as a fraud, as a scammer, as a con artist, as somebody who, if I were actually indeed making as much money as I was saying in my income reports, I would be wearing better clothing. Somebody who would never do this if I was actually making that kind of money. And by doing this, it was sharing my income reports, being completely open and honest about how I was building my business, sharing both wins and failures. And I've done income reports since 2000 and uh, 2008. And a lot of people have loved them. So many people have appreciated them. Some people have started businesses because they've seen, gotten inspiration from those income reports. But this one person was saying such negative things and was pinpointing every little thing and having a case for it. It almost made me believe him. I think that's the worst thing that can happen when these haters get so into it that you doubt your own self and why you do what you do. Now, obviously stepping back, I knew a lot of that stuff was not true, but it still hurt. It hurt so much that I stopped blogging, I stopped creating videos, and I didn't publish a podcast for two weeks straight. Basically my life looked like this. Now, although I can poke fun at that now, it was something at the time that really hurt me and I didn't wanna do anything. I didn't wanna be online anymore. I didn't wanna be vulnerable to that kind of thing. Now, what made this even worse was when I finally calmed down and I opened up my email inbox, I saw 10 to 12 messages from some of my friends asking me, hey, who's this guy who's posting this nasty stuff about you online? And I was like, yeah, was, he left this comment on my blog. He's like, no, he left this comment on my blog. He had gone around and posted the exact same comment on the same blogs where I was featured as a guest or I was mentioned in an interview. I, I couldn't believe this. Um, I felt defenseless. I felt hurt, obviously. Um, I, I reached out to my friends and thankfully they all deleted that comment right away and they were offering for help and asking me if I was okay. And you know, I would say, yeah, I'm fine, but I've, obviously I wasn't fine. 
Um, and I just, I just kind of, I, I just kind of retreated. Um, but then I do have to say, and, and I, a big shout out to my friend Derek Halpern, who at the time, I don't even know if he, he knows he really did this, but he made a huge impact on me because he said one thing that really stuck with me. He said, Pat, I haven't seen you online for a while. I know that this hater thing happened, but dude, let me give it to you straight. And Derek always gives it to you straight. He said, every second you waste thinking about this hater is a second you are taking away from the people who need you, who want you, who like you. And that was probably the most useful piece of advice because I received a lot of advice. I received advice like, oh, you got a hater, like you've made it. I'm like, really? Like this doesn't feel good. Like I don't feel like I've made it when somebody is saying these things about me. That doesn't make sense to me. Or advice from people that were just saying like, just completely ignore, just delete them off your website. And yes, I did do that, but it didn't take away the fact that this person had said this and also was posting it all around the internet. But Derek's advice hit home with me because I started to remember, well, why am I doing this? Am I doing this to please everybody? Well, no. Am I doing this to help as many people as I can? Yes. And by focusing on this other person for so long, am I actually doing what I, what, what I set out to do? Absolutely not. And so thanks to Derek, thank you Derek from socialtriggers.com, I was able to start writing again. And it didn't take long for me to really feel the positive energy coming from, from the community again. This is really something I've never shared uh, in, in full before, other than in person in conversation. Um, the other crazy part about the story is I reached out to this person eventually, and I asked, why did he do this? Why did you go through all this effort? And he said that <laughs> uh, he saw me as an easy target because I was so open and, and honest about everything online. I was starting to be seen everywhere. And he said that he was looking to just try and get more traffic to his website. And when I heard that, my initial thought was, <laughs> how can I help you? Like, where are you getting this information from that this is the method that you need to use to grow traffic to your website? Like, here are some videos. I will show you how to do that the right way without hurting anybody's feelings and taking others down with you. Now, I didn't help him <laughs> and I didn't offer those videos. Um, I just kind of walked away and I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And the funny thing was like, he didn't even do it to hurt me. He did it for him. And it's really interesting because over the years, I've still continued to get comments, but some playful, hateful comments, but then some also hateful, hateful, hurtful comments. And, and you know, th they've been growing more as my business has been growing more and I've been getting more exposure, which is expected. I've grown a thick skin over time, which is good. And you're gonna have to build one over time uh, for you to be successful in this world, honestly. You know, it's when you try to build something that pleases everybody, you're actually not going big enough. You're not taking a stand. You're not, you don't, you don't have a stance on something so much that it actually upsets some other people. You might be playing it too safe. You might be just playing average. So that's something I consider. But then the other thing is, and I learned this from my good friend, Shannon Irvin, Dr. Shannon Irvin, who is a neuroscience, uh, neuropsychologist. She said the following, which really stuck with me as well. And she said, hurt people, hurt people. And the, the video didn't skip there. I'm like, hurt people hurt people. People who are hurt tend to hurt others because they are hurt. And so whenever I get a hurtful comment now that seemingly is like trying to take me down, I always realize in the back of my head, well, wow, that is a human being who said that. There must be something going on in that person's life to give them the thought that they could do this to somebody else too. So what's going on? How can I help? And that's typically my first response. Like, hey, I don't think normal people say that. There must be going something going on in your life, so how can I help you? So it's interesting. Sometimes I will take the time to reply and have a conversation and try to see what I can do to, to, to find where that hurt is so I can help. And actually some of those people have converted into some of my biggest fans. That's not always recommended. I think the recommended sort of overall a uh, piece of advice for dealing with haters is to just stay away, right? Later, haters. But I, I took a little bit of inspiration from Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, who when he wrote his book, Crush It, uh, back in 2008, I think it was, um, he responded to every single one-star comment. He even offered to have a conversation with those people. And it was really interesting because people would reply back. This is in the Amazon review section. One-star review, 
Gary Vaynerchuk going, hey, I'm sorry the book didn't uh, delight you. Can I have a conversation just to see what went wrong? And to see somebody of that caliber do that inspired me to do that every, every once in a while. And you can kind of have a sense for who might be coming from a place where you could actually help them and others who are just really doing it for the attention. And the trolls and, and the haters on YouTube especially and on my blog, it's like, hey, that's my home. Like, this is my channel. Peace, block, IP address, done. Um, and that's that. Like, you guys who are still here watching this, you, you guys are Team Flynn, like, I'm here to protect you guys too. And what's really cool too is as, as you begin to build a, an audience in a, in a community, um, you guys will begin to protect each other and, and protect me too. I've seen that happen where somebody will leave a hateful comment on Facebook or something about something I've done or said or something I've launched. And then out of the woodwork, like 20, 30 people will come and support me. And for that, I appreciate you so much. And you know, I think it's just the mutual beneficial relationship we have here that uh, we're, all, we're all here to help each other, right? And that's why this is Team Flynn. I'm the team captain. I wear the armband during the soccer game but uh, I don't score the goals. I pass you the ball sometime, but we're in this together for, for bigger reasons. And for that, I thank you so much. I hope this video was helpful and inspirational to you. Perhaps you are going through one of your hater moments right now and realize that it's not you. It's never about you. And um, just, I wanna wish you all the best. And hopefully if I, if I could help one person with this video, like Derek helped me, um, this will be a success. So let me know what you think below. Have you dealt with haters before? Uh, I'll link to some other fun, interesting videos from friends like Ramit Sethi who actually read his comments uh, on his YouTube channel from haters. And that, that's his way of dealing with it. Um, and, and this video is mine. So thank you so much, I appreciate you. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if at any point in the future you're dealing with a hater and you need somebody to talk to, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter, uh, at Pat Flynn, here for you guys. I know you guys are there for each other as well. Team Flynn for the win.